CSS is red from top to bottom. This is very important because it means we need to be mindful about the order in which we select our elements, especially when we're selecting the same element twice. So for example, just to demonstrate in my index.html, we see in my body element, I have this h1 element. And then in my CSS, we see I'm already selecting it and giving it a color of red. And we see it's red in our live server. But now underneath our h1 rule set, what would happen if I reselected our h1 element and also gave it a color property, but this time another color like green. When I save, we see our h1 is now green. When two rule sets have the same selector and both of them are attempting to define the same property but with different values, what you get as a result is conflicting rule sets. Our two rule sets are conflicting with each other. They're both competing to apply their styles on the same element and on the same property. In this case, the conflict is resolved by the order of appearance. Since CSS is read from top to bottom, our second rule set gets interpreted last and therefore our h1 receives the color of green. Now, unfortunately, it's not always so simple. For example, in my index.html, I'll give my h1 element a class called title. And then back in my CSS, on my first rule set, instead of selecting all h1 elements by their element name, I'll select our h1 element by the class we've just given it. And when I save, we see, despite the order of appearance, our first rule set is the one getting applied, and we see our heading is red instead of green. The reason this is happening is because it turns out CSS uses an algorithm to resolve conflicting rule sets, a point system called specificity. This algorithm, specificity, what with it being a point system, will resolve the conflicting rule sets by looking for the selector with the most points, almost like how games have a scoring system and the player with the highest score wins the game. At the very top of my CSS file, I'll add a comment that says style attribute, IDs, classes, and elements. Now above both of my existing rule sets, I'll add a comment above both of them that says 0000. zero, zero, zero. These zeros above my rule sets represent the point system CSS uses under the hood to determine the specificity of a selector. The first zero represents style attributes. The second represents ID selectors. The third represents class selectors. And the fourth represents selecting elements by their element name. If I was to distribute points across our two rule sets, on the first, since we're using a class selector, I can replace the second to last zero with a one, and then on my second rule set, since we're selecting our h1 by its element name, I can replace the last zero with a1. Points that are further left are worth more points than those to the right. Style attributes are worth the most, IDs are worth the second most, classes are worth the third most, and selecting elements by their element name is worth the least. Our first rule set uses a selector worth more points than the one used on our second rule set. Therefore, despite the order of appearance, the first rule set wins the conflict. Now I'll head over to my index.html and I'll give my h1 element an ID called title. Then in my CSS, above our first rule set, I'll reselect our h1 element, but this time by its ID, and I'll give it a color of purple. By adding this new rule set, we've just added another conflicting rule set in the mix. But before I save, what do you suppose is going to be the color of our heading when I run this code? When I save, we see our heading is now purple. Above my new rule set, I'll add a comment that says 0000. And since this rule set is using an ID selector, I'll replace the second zero for a one. This new rule set uses a selector worth more points than any of the other ones. And so despite the order of appearance, this rule set wins the conflict. Finally, to demonstrate the highest specificity, in my index.html, I'll give my h1 element the style attribute, and I'll give it a color of pink. I'll also add a comment above my h1 element that says 0000. And since we're using the style attribute, I'll replace the first zero with a one. When I save, we see our h1 is now pink. And this is because the style attribute is worth more points than everything else. The style attribute is worth the most amount of points, and therefore it has the highest specificity. However, as a last resort, there is still one way to beat it. Back in my CSS, on my last rule set, which by the way has the least amount of points, against my color of green, I'll say exclamation mark, 
important. This important keyword actually wins over any conflict. And when I save, we see, despite this rule set having the lowest specificity, our heading is green. Now there's one last thing I want to show you. In my index.html, I'll add an unordered list with one list element inside it. Inside this list element, I'll add a ordered list with one list element inside it. Inside this list element, I'll add an unordered list with one list element inside it. Inside this list element, I'll add a ordered list with one list element inside it. And finally, inside this list element, I'll add an unordered list with one list element inside it. Now I'm just going to move my h1 element inside our deeply nested list element. Back in my CSS, I'll remove the important keyword from our color of green. And when I save, our heading is back to being pink since in my HTML, our h1 element is getting a color of pink from its style attribute. But back in my CSS, on my last rule set, instead of just selecting my h1 element like this, I'm going to do something silly and select my ul, my li, my ol, my li, ul, li, ol, li, ul, li, and finally my h1. We're now selecting 11 elements with the descendant combinator selector, which is kind of insane. But since we're selecting 11 elements by their element name, I'll update the point system above our row set from 1 to 11. This selector is worth 11 points on the last bracket. This is a lot, but despite it being a lot, when I save, we see nothing happened. Our heading is still pink. This is because brackets only compete with their own brackets. This means that it doesn't really matter how many points we have in our last bracket, the style attribute bracket is still the winner. If I head over to my index.html and remove the style attribute from our h1 element and save, we see our highest winning bracket is now the rule set in my CSS with the ID selector, and so our heading is purple. If I comment out this rule set, it's now our rule set with the class selector that has the highest winning bracket, and our heading is now red. And finally, if I comment it out, of course now our h1 has a color of green. However, because brackets only compete with their own brackets, this 11 point element selector will win against other rule sets that uses element names for selectors. So, for example, if I add a new rule set underneath this 11.1 and select my h1 by its element name and give it a color of brown, we see when I save, our h1 is still green. I'll add a comment above it that says 0000. 000 000. And since we're selecting our h1 element by its element name, I'll replace the last zero for a one. Both of these rule sets are competing within their own bracket. And despite the order of appearance, the one with the highest points wins the conflict. For the order of appearance to win a conflict, competing rule sets must be competing within the same bracket and have the same amount of points. For example, if I copy my 11 selectors and paste them on my new rule set and save, we see. Our heading is now brown. I'll update the points from 1 to 11. And now that both rule sets share the same bracket and have the same amount of points, the order of appearance is now the determining factor in resolving the conflict. Now, as you can see, specificity is obviously very complicated and is probably the culprit for a lot of the headaches people get when working with CSS. As a best practice, and especially to mitigate how unruly specificity becomes as your app grows in scale, a common convention is to simply default to using classes for selecting everything. You can literally avoid all of the headaches, issues, complications, and unpredictability by just always selecting your elements with classes. When everything you want to style is selected with classes, you create consistency in your specificity to where you no longer even need to think about it and only ever have to think about the order of appearance, which is inherently much easier to track. By simply defaulting to using classes, you make CSS substantially easier to work with.